glad this movie is a lot more than the back of Ryan Gosling's head and really intense music cues. Hey everybody, welcome back to Drinks in a Movie. Chris Hamker back with you. Today we'll be talking about Blade Runner 2049. But first, we'll start with the drink. Uh, and the drink is coincidentally called the Blade Runner Cocktail. Uh, not quite sure why it's called the Blade Runner Cocktail. I found this on the World Wide Web that some of you may be familiar with. So, let's get right into it. The Blade Runner Cocktail is, uh, there's a few parts to it, but it's fairly simple. It's uh, Two parts light rum, uh, half part spiced rum, two and a half parts pineapple juice, uh, half part uh, lime juice, and a dash of simple syrup and a dash of bitters. So let's start making this drink and talking about Blade Runner 2049. So Blade Runner 2049 is directed by Denis Villeneuve of Arrival and Prisoners in Sicario fame and written by Hampton Francher, which is the original writer of the Blade Runner, um, of Blade Runner back in 1982, which is pretty cool. Um, and stars Ryan Gosling, Harrison Ford, and this is a sequel that has been 35 years in the making, which is pretty incredible. I don't think anybody ever thought that there was gonna be a sequel to Blade Runner, uh, but there is. And the story goes, Ryan Gosling's character is named Kay, um, and he is a Blade Runner who is tasked to hunt down replicants that have gone missing or rogue or whatever you wanna call it. And he stumbles upon a mystery to where he finds that he has to locate uh, former Blade Runner Deckard, played again by Harrison Ford, and and he discovers this world-altering mystery in the process. Uh, this is one of those rare instances where the studio and the marketing campaign did a great job of marketing this movie because they did not give anything away and they were very honest and not misleading in their marketing. So that's why I have to be so vague in describing this movie to you guys because uh, I don't want to give anything away. I don't want to do any spoilers. I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm going to try to be as vague as possible. So let's try this drink real quick and then we'll get into Blade Runner 2049. All right, let's check this out. All right, here's to the Blade Runner cocktail and Blade Runner 2049. Okay, so let me start off by saying that I think Denis Villeneuve is one of the most talented up-and-coming directors working today. Uh, and I think it's strange to say up-and-coming, but in reality, he's only directed five feature-length films. Uh, but he's become so popular so quick uh, that he's he, he's he's almost you know now a mainstay in the in the film community, especially from last year's Arrival that was nominated for Best Picture, which I loved. It was my second favorite movie of the year, and the success of 2015. And Sicario. Plus, this movie wasn't as widely seen as, as those two, but Prisoners was my number one movie of 2013, and that's one of his as well. So, yeah, I think he is super talented, and I can't wait for everything that he does to come out. Now, that having been said, this movie is gorgeous. I mean, it's truly stunning. Now, if you don't know the name Roger Deakins, you should as a film fan, because this guy is one of the best cinematographers working today. He's worked with such great directors as Sam Mendes, the Coens, um, um, uh, Shawshank Redemption, Frank Darabont, um, and he uh, is at the top of his game in this movie. It's almost, this movie is such a visual smorgasbord, it's almost as if Roger Deakins is showing off. And I think it's due to the credit of him working with Denis Villeneuve, who, um, just like Arrival, just like any of his movies, every shot is specific, every shot is, is, is has, a, has a purpose, there's no throwaway shots at all. Sorry, you'll Forgive my, my voice will go in and out. I've been sick for the past week. Um, but there's no throwaway shots at all, and that's what make, makes this movie beautiful. I mean, it is just a, uh, um, you just 
eat up the visuals. I mean, they 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 uh, are captivating. I mean, they truly are. Now, the next thing I loved about this film is the fully lived in, very well realized world of Blade Runner that they totally expand on from what Ridley Scott did back in 1982. I mean, they 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 not only make this world feel real, but they they. They progress the technology to where it makes sense in the world of Blade Runner. They don't just make it a, f a flashy future uh, with a lot of like uh, touch screens and and and, and fa flashy visuals. They they take the, I don't know if this makes sense, but they take the the technology of of the original Blade Runner and just push it forward. Uh, there's a, even a scene where Ryan Gosling's um, investigating a lead, and he uses just this updated version of this kind of microfiche. Um, machine that they, they they kind of use in the first one but it's just updated but it's still very mechanical it's still very um old sci-fi um and uh and they don't feel the need to 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 flash it up like a, like a Minority Report or a J.J. Abrams uh, Star Trek film. They even double down on the on, on the billboards where they have like a lot of Atari billboards and and Pan Am uh, companies that aren't really in the forefront anymore or don't even exist like Pan Am, but they did in the original Blade Runner. So in that future, those companies are still around and still you know vi uh, vital to the to the to, to the world. Uh, there's a lot of Sony stuff in there, which is fine because it's a Sony movie, um, but this world truly does feel real and it's got this grit and use out of it. Um, there's a sequence in a, in a, in like a, in like this vast junkyard that is ju just spectacular. I mean, it goes along with the with with the look of the film that this this like lived in universe is is just so fully realized and well done. All the performances were really good as well. Uh, Harrison Ford gives one of his best performances in years, in my opinion, and Ryan Gosling is well, Ryan Gosling. He's stoic, smoldering, and still yet very engaging. He does what he does best, and he's really good at it. Um, but uh, one of my favorite characters is a character played by Ana de Armas. Uh, who is this kind of love interest for Ryan Gosling? And it, it they they are very, they they have quite uh, a good chemistry, and there's they also have the most interesting and fascinating love scene I've I think ever seen put to, put put to film. And that's uh, I don't think I'm exaggerating, but it was just really interesting and really well done, and the uh, the effects of it were were uh, just fascinating. Um, uh, you know, honestly, there wasn't a weak link in this movie uh, in terms of the acting. Um, Jared Leto's in it. He certainly is. And I don't know if Jared Leto willfully ignores the idea of subtlety, but I just think he finds it boring. And so he just does his own thing and goes just way over the top. Luckily, he's not in it that much because he was just on the edge of, of kind of just too, too much and, and annoying. Now, I suppose it's sounding like that I'm going to give this movie a perfect score and join everybody in calling this a sci-fi masterpiece. Not quite. I'm sorry. It's just not quite there. And I think the reason is, is that um, this movie didn't move me emotionally. I didn't have any emotional connections to really anybody in the story. Um, and I think that has to do with this, the very basic storyline that, uh, that this movie has. Um, Unfortunately to me, the movie uh, uh, answers its mystery way too early, and all it does is is offer a little bit a little bit of a twist on the mystery further on down the road. But you know what's going on the entire time, and you just have to you know go along with Gosling's character to figure it out. This movie doesn't delve into the philosophical questions that the first one did because it refuses to answer the questions that need to be answered if the reveal of the mystery is to be fully explored. That sounds really vague and confusing because I don't want to give anything away, but they don't they don't answer some main questions and then and then try to and try to build this you know great mythology off the off the mystery that they are giving in this one they they have to answer those questions but then they want to they want to remain vague and ambiguous just like the first one and that ends up being really annoying and 
and, and just takes me right out. Plus, I don't like the way that they use the character of Deckard, uh, Harrison Ford character from the first one. I feel like he is, I don't think this is given too much away, he's a bit of a MacGuffin, um, and he's totally kind of sidelined on, on the big finale. And uh, I just I just thought it was a little bit of a cheat and kind of, um, and kind of disappointing. Um, and ultimately, I left this movie going, huh, okay. It was beautiful, it looked amazing, and I loved the world that they built, but there wasn't much behind it. I didn't I didn't have that emotional investment, and um, that's where it falls short for me. Uh, if, if you're looking for a current sci-fi masterpiece, I would look at last year's uh, Arrival that's also directed by Denis Villeneuve. That movie, um, is is a lot better because you have emotional investment and you also have a uh, a really smart adult sci-fi story along with it so um that's what i think uh, i look i really like this movie i thought it was really well done and really well made just not a masterpiece in my opinion um and i'm gonna give it uh four drinks out of five um that's just the the way i feel but uh let me know what you think uh let me know what you think of the original blade runner i think it's just okay i think the original blade runner is a little boring um this one does a lot better with pacing and keeping you fully engaged the entire time so I, I do like it better than the original um but yeah let me know what you think cheers everybody have a drink on me thank you so much for joining me if you like this please like share and subscribe down here at the bottom cheers bye bye